Mm. Roger, I have never touched a guitar in my life. I want to do the five first notes. The first note is a G, and you play it with this finger straight down. Got your finger on it, dopey. Ah, bravo, bravo. My guest and good friend, one of the top performing artists in the world, Roger Waters. Politics. It's very like the situation in the United States of America now, where you have an incredibly rich country with extreme poverty. That's what's fascinating about this presidential election. Yes. Where the choice is graphic. Religion. That's my view. It's a personal view because I'm a radical atheist. Money. The sewers are clogged with the greed of powerful men. Today, we turn down the world. It's all on the table. Santé, mon ami. Good to see you. It's good to see you too. Voilà. À la tienne. À la tienne, mec. It's good. Mm. Roger wanted me to show him how to do a dish with langoustines. I'm going to show you the langoustines. They look fabulous. Yeah, they're very beautiful. Right. Take it like that, and you try to get all that, that flesh. And then here, you could open it like that, but this is very sharp and pointy, and you will hurt yourself. OK. Uh, so what you try to do is to peel the langoustine by moving the two first rings here. You see, like, yeah. one ring, two rings? Yeah. So you, right you here. You twisted it, didn't and you? And they come by themselves. And then you push here. Here it's very pointy. So you touch here where it's soft. And you pull. And you see, even the intestine stays inside. We don't want to see that, obviously. When I was young, my first job in La Tour d'Argent was to peel langoustines. And they didn't tell me the trick. They wanted to, you know, play with a young kid. Yeah. So my hands got completely cut and infected. And the day after, I couldn't move my hands. And I became an expert in peeling langoustines. I learned the hard way. You want to try one? Sure, why not? Just pull uh, gently. Like that. That's it, we got it. And here, pull. Stay on the top, ah. because it will hurt your fingers. He never played the guitar again. <laughs> That's it, you got it. Ladies and gentlemen. Roger got the intestine too. So when you grew up, your mom was a good cook? My mother, bless her, was an appalling cook. Appalling cook? Yeah, really, really. So appalling is a very bad word? Yeah, it's bad. For instance, we lived in a small house in Cambridge, and we had fish every Saturday. Uh, the fishman would come down Rock Road with a handcart. We always bought one small lemon sole, which we had for Saturday lunch, and she would ask for seven fish heads. All Saturday afternoon, the fish heads would boil on top of an old coke-burning stove that we had. To make a soup or to...? to... No. We doled out one a day to the cat. Oh, she was thinking about the cat. So every day, the cat had a fish head. Go on, there. You know what cats are like, man. <laughs> yeah, I know what they are. You have two. I'm going to make a beurre blanc. We need some good wine. We need to pace ourselves, Eric. A long afternoon. When you grew up, your mom was a teacher. But she was also a communist. In England, communist was OK. I mean, to be a communist. At the end of the 30s, when she joined the Communist Party, it was almost a rigueur amongst anybody with a brain. They, you, they could see what was going on in, in Germany. And, and they'd also seen what had happened in the general strike in England in 1926. And so she went as a rather innocent young woman to teach in a rural part of England. And she suddenly, in the middle of winter, saw children coming to school, walking through the snow in bare feet. She became politicized and galvanized. It's very like the situation in the United States of America now where you have an incredibly rich country with extreme poverty, even in some of the most developed parts. You know. That's what's fascinating about this presidential election, Yes, where the choice is graphic. So on the one hand, you've got this guy who did pull himself up by his bootstraps and came from humble beginnings, fought his way through the education system and was one of the brightest students they've ever had in the law school at Harvard and then went into local government and eventually became president of the United States. On the other side, you've got a guy running against him who was born into a privileged family and has spent his life asset stripping, putting people out of work, and who is absolutely committed to making that divide between the very rich and the poor bigger. It's not sustainable. You end up with a revolution. One of my friends said to me the other day, you're going to have to wait until the sewers back up and the stink becomes unbearable before people will go, whoa, there's something wrong here. 
The sewers are clogged with the greed of powerful men. If you're very, very rich, you can buy the country if you're allowed to do that. Roger is brutally honest and uh, he, he speaks from, from his heart. And whatever he feels like, uh, he's going to tell you. It's a bit like your Patriot Act over here, where they say, well, 9-11 happened. In consequence, we must enact all these new laws that take away your civil liberties. Your citizens no longer have those rights. We're still in a democracy. I mean, you and I can still talk about those things. You are not still in a democracy. You can buy political power now. That is not democratic. Republicans, they're suggesting that in order to register for a vote, you have to have an ID. The places where you can go and get an ID are only open at very small numbers of times. A, and B, to get the ID, you have to produce a birth certificate. It's like imposing a poll tax. And they can't afford it. They're saying to you, fuck you then, you can't vote. Wow. I mean, it's so scary to think that there's an, even any question of Romney being elected. Because you know what he'll do? They'll probably invade Iran. That's what they'll do. They'll throw away another 5,000, you know, young American lives and hundreds of thousands, possibly millions of Iranians. I've never been to Iraq and I've never been to Iran. So there's a big student movement who are against the religious extremists who run the country there. Yeah, they hijack the religion to get power. It may well be that they're sincere in, in their belief that the Quran is more truthful than uh, the New Testament. Personally, I think they're all pretty much nonsense. That's yeah. my view. It's a personal view because I'm a radical atheist, so I would naturally have... You're a radical atheist? Yes. There is a beauty in the organization of natural history and physics at which I wonder. I don't find it necessary to say that, oh, well, there must be somebody in the sky who made it all. The idea, for instance, that it was all spewed up by somebody and that he vomited up the solar system on day one and then the cheetahs and the leopards on day two is no more fantastic than the six-day creationist notion that and on the first day, he made this and that and the other. And, and then there were these naked people in a garden and a snake that talked to them. And, you know, it's dopey. It's no less dumb than, oh, the leopards and the cheetahs appeared. Every religion has its own uh, rituals and, and practices and so on. But it's a very common message about tolerance, about peace, about compassion. If I was to adhere to a religion, Buddhism would be the thing that I would embrace. One of the pillars of, of Buddhism uh, philosophy is to acknowledge that you are going to experience suffering. Being a Buddhist, I do not tolerate injustice, but it's a different way of digesting it and then um, acting on it. Saying that, the langoustines are cooked, Roger. <laughs> okay, so if it's slightly translucent, it means it's medium rare. It's not going to be tough and, and taste like cardboard. So I'm going to put one here for you. I'm going to put the sauce on the side so you can taste the langoustine with the sauce. This is a very simple mother sauce. Cooking can be artistry when you become creative. This is just the craftsmanship. Mm. That is not craftsmanship, that is artistry. Roger has created music that is timeless. In cooking, you can do the same. You can have an artistic vision and create also something that is relevant. We are done with the langoustines. We are going to make some fish tacos. So, Roger, Pink Floyd. Yes, Eric. 1967, February, which so I'm You're being paid to play on stage and, and to... Yeah, yeah, we're being paid. We had an album out that first year in 1967, and we had two singles out. 67, 68, 69, those first three years, I made seven pounds a week. Seven pounds a week? You couldn't live on... It. Yeah, but you're living your passion. Almost everything that I've ever written is about my belief that there is no us or them. I find the lyrics absolutely amazing. We're all in it together. There's no difference between us and the kid in Mississippi who doesn't have enough to eat and is living on food stamps and has no future. Don't get me started. <laughs> you started already, Roger. We're all human beings and we behave differently by accidents of our birth. The walls that divide us are created accidentally. <laughs>
and in consequence, they are reversible. Once we understand that they're only like us, we're just people who are born in different parts of the world. We don't have collateral damage anymore. We no longer allow the headlong rush to maximize the bottom line. We say that other things that are more important. You know, you, you guys topped the league last year. You sold billions of dollars worth of uh, military hardware to other people. Never mind what we, the taxpayers, and I am a taxpayer here, spent on the hardware that was used by US armed forces all over the world. The profit in that is beyond where, where does it anything go? goes into the pockets of the very rich people. So that they can give it then to Romney, so that he can get elected, so that they can then perpetuate the system, go on killing brown people all over the world, go on ripping off the middle class and the working class in this country go on getting richer and richer and richer, go on cutting taxes for themselves and imposing huge penalties on people who are less powerful and less well off. Even Obama, bless him, you know, is, oh, we're going to re-educate everybody and do this and that so we can beat everyone else in the world. That's so dumb. You can't beat everyone else in the world. No, of and course. Why should you want to? The idea that it's a weird economic game where there are winners and losers. I mean, if you want to play that game, Go ahead, and you are going to be beaten by the Chinese. It's over. That's not what you want. What you want is to be able to cooperate with the Chinese and, make, and the Iranians. And make the world one. In that case, we should um, put more emphasis on teaching compassion and create inner peace, develop the qualities of the heart. You're absolutely right. Our society is not sustainable if we take advantage of poor people and bring them down. Ultimately, it's going to be a revolution and I, I would like to believe that, that one might be able to affect some kind of change, however minor it is. Roger is one of those genius. I always say to him, you know, um, in a joking way, but I always say when they're going to look at us in, in 500 years from now, they're going to remember very few people, and you are one of them. Um, obviously, as a songwriter, uh, it is amazing, the lyrics of, of Pink Floyd and, and whatever Roger has written is always uh, unbelievable. The world that he just finished performing is a timeless piece that uh, will be relevant forever. The world came out in 1979. Yeah. How long did it take you to write the world? Maybe a month. A month, wow. The original demo of the world is one month. You go on tour. Did someone say one day to you, oh, you should go on the wall? It was Laurie. She's a fantastic lady. She's great. She's my wife. She said to me one day, well, if you're going out again, the only thing you can do is the wall. And I went, no, I can't do that. It's like, well, are you kidding? You know, she let me stew with it. And I went, no. Nah. Once she'd said it, I realised that she was right. Have we got any sour cream? I don't know if sour cream was on your list. Well, I that was my fault. I didn't put it on the list. It's no such a thing as fault. That's you going all Buddhist. There is such a thing as fault. People have to be held responsible for their actions. Don't go after me, OK? I'm just the guy who's broiling the shrimp here. You're the guy who thought you lived in a democracy. What I'm suggesting, yes. Monsieur what? Le Chef, is that you just make a little thing of that and stick a shrimp on top and put some of the salsa beside it, put the so shrimp on top. But that's like, yeah, just, like well, that? no, 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 a bit more than that. Why don't you do it? OK. OK, that much. I put the shrimp. Yeah, you put the shrimp. You need a little bit more, because you're French. You're very bossy for being in my kitchen. What is that? Come I on. thought you were supposed to be the sous chef. I <laughs> well, am, yeah, but uh, I want to be the chef again. <laughs> and of course, he had to take control today, because he wanted to have the recipe as good as the one he does in his house. You're being difficult. <laughs> I am difficult. I'm going to taste this. It's so sort of simple, but the tomatilla salsa is delicious. No, this is delicious. Don't sound so surprised. I have this piece of filet. I didn't know how big you want it, so I didn't cut it in advance. Right. You go like that? Yeah, yeah. OK, so it's two inches thick. Yeah, that's perfect. So I never marinate it in a plant because the salt basically takes the juice out and the water and everything else. And I always put the pepper also at the last minute. I like this idea because then you get that crusty, crunchy... Which is nice. Yeah. How do you like the meat cooked? Bleu. Yeah. Black and blue. Doesn't that look good? 
good. Oh, yeah, it looks good. We're not putting that cheap brandy on it, are we? This is not cheap brandy. What do you talk about? I know. I'm kidding. The meat is very black and blue. Because it's filet mignon, it doesn't have to last for too long. This could be meat cooking. It's very like this. You want to put the pepper? Boom. What? You okay. cannot have too much poivre. This is, like, uh, insane. I'm going to stand for back. And this is very important. You have a lot of it. Watch out. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. It's my favorite moment. And mine too. I want to go back to the wall. Yes. You start the concert with your father picture, and then it goes into a break in the wall. You put a lot of pictures of people. All those images were sent in to me by people, and they all sent in the story of who those people are and how they died. And, and they go into the bricks. The audiences, both in North and South America, have embraced the philosophy and the politics behind the show. I'm so happy that they have. I just sense that if we can tear down the wall between the very, very rich and the very poor in this country, then we can start thinking maybe about the other walls. Well, cheers. It's been a great cheers. pleasure. Thank you so much. So, during the war, you invite veterans backstage with you. What is their reaction? They say, thank you so much for inviting us. And I say, I'm really glad you're here. And I yes. am. But there was one time we were doing this show. They all want to have photos and whatever, and we, I signed shit and whatever, and it's great. And this one guy was sort of hanging back, and as I was leaving the room, uh, he came up to me, and he sort of stood in my way, and he looked at me like that. And I thought, I wonder what's coming now. He put his hand out like that, and I went, oh, he wants to shake hands. So I shook hands, and he said, your father would be proud of you. Wow. I was just going on stage for the second half, and when he said that to That's me, where you were. Still now, I can see you moved by uh, that. He put his thumb yes. right into my heart, you know, and into my connections with my father, and the fact that my father always stood up for what he believed in, and he gave his life for it. In the same way that these guys do, there is no greater love, you know, that man should give up his life for his brother. I just think we need to get the foreign policy right so that these brave young men are not having to give up their lives for something that is worthless. I don't know how this conversation turned this, you know, into this thing. Well, actually, I do know, because we both care about shit, and, and thank goodness that we do. I'm very touched by your generosity and your presence here, Roger. Very, very touched. And uh, it's a real honor, obviously, to, to be with you and work with you on, uh, on the show. And, uh, Merci beaucoup. We, th we thank you so, so much. Well, it's been great fun. Cheers. Cheers to friendship. Here's to friendship. Yeah. And to our wives. Laurie and Sandra. What? We'll try to make us civilized. Hello. <laughs> we're all right. I know lots of real assholes, and we're not then. <laughs> Why did you bring those guitars in? You're very good, Roger. <laughs> My intent is to learn the five first no you say notes, right, in English? Of Wish You Were Here. Now. Wish You Were Here is about the, the world is a confusing place, and uh, yeah. uh, it's difficult to find a reality that one can grasp wholeheartedly. The thing that I attach to most powerfully in my life is my humanity and that of other people. And Laurie, of course. Yeah, don't forget Laurie. It was a lot of fun to be with Roger and to have this intimacy and to cook together. It's just, it's just like two friends in the kitchen. Roger was very much himself. Roger, I have never touched a guitar in my life. You, you need to take that plectrum. It's all right. I'm just going to assume that yours is vaguely in tune. <laughs> I want to do the five first notes. Okay. Down, da da down, okay. down. All right. Finish. Well, all right. The first note is a G, and you play it with this finger, with the second finger. You can't play it like that. It has to be vertical. You can't hit the A string as well. You just hit that string. You need to hold the plectrum a little more stiffly. So what you're doing is pulling it across straight down. Now, the next thing is you hit an open A string and you do what we call hammering. That's it. And then you hit that down hard. Got your finger on it, dopey. That's it. The next thing is really easy. It's an open D string. Ah, bravo, bravo. <laughs> and then the last note is an E. 
there. So... I get it. There you go. Great! Open. No! E! <laughs> e what? Great. Open. That was perfect. Well, perfect is maybe Last a stretch. It's not easy. It's not easy. Well, a guitar lesson from Roger Waters is very humbling, <laughs> I have to say. Playing guitar, it's hard. But uh, I tried, and uh, um, yeah, I'm going back to my knives. Roger? Yeah. It's a tradition. You sign anywhere you want. OK. I sign anywhere I can. Hello. Roger, thank you. Ciao, thank you, my friend. <laughs> thank you so much. At the end of the day, I love Roger's uh, friendship and I love his authenticity. Uh, that is what I think makes Roger Waters Roger Waters. He's no bullshit. He's, he, he's, if he's going to do something, he's going to do it. If he's going to say something, he means it. If not, he's not going to go off us. I did notice that he wouldn't let me cook the filet au poivre. He cooked... He, I nearly used the F word then. You know, he fucking cooked it. He didn't give me a chance. I was going to cook it, and, I, and he went, no, I'm cooking, and he cooked it. You boss me all day today. <laughs> you tell me what to do. You're like, take this, do that, not like this, not like that. I thought that was the point. Yeah, no, it's exactly the point. It's a very uh, humbling experience. <laughs>